All right. So start off by selecting the strokes. Um, I do it by, again, select same stroke color. And then I'll just copy it using Control C. Um, then I usually make a new layer. Obviously, I've already made it. Use paste in place, which is an edit paste in place, um, which will put it exactly over top so that your cut marks always line up exactly. Okay. Uh, and then I change it to a fill. I just make it a different color. Now, this is where I set up bleeds. So depending on how much bleed you want is up to you. Uh, but basically, I just add a stroke to that uh, layer that I copied and pasted. Okay. And then I'll usually set it to like 16 or 18. Um, so you can see how it's kind of creating some, an area outside of the cut line here. Yep. Um, so once I have those with the stroke like that, I will go to expand appearance. And then from there, I will select them individually. Uh, and you go into the Pathfinder menu, which is, you know, if you have window open, Pathfinder. Okay. Then there's this button right here called Merge. All right. And that'll merge those so that now you have a new uh, object that is now solid rather than having like those dual lines. So if you see it before, you can see how there's a couple of different strokes in there. Yep. Whereas once you merge it, um, oops, I went too far. Once you merge it, it's just one. Okay. So I'll do those individually. So or you can, do, you can do them all at once if you want to. Okay. But then you have to ungroup them. Oh, see okay. how they'll all be one thing? Yep. So I like to ungroup them just because I like to be able to move parts around later on if I need to, um, yeah. rather, than, rather than making them all one uh, one big clip path. So, um, um, uh, so for every new design, this has to be done? Or it just has to be done once and then you drop in the pattern? Well, you could do it once and drop in the pattern depending on how you have your stuff set up. Uh, you'd have to make sure that all your patterns then would be on the same square, I guess, so that you could relink them. Okay, let's just do it. Otherwise, the way. patterns aren't going to fill correctly. Okay, yeah, we'll just do it this way and then I'll ask that question later. Well, because the other option is you can actually make patterns and then set them as fills uh, as a fill color. The problem is, is once you do that, you can't change the color. Oh, I see. Um, I mean, there's an easy way around that, but I guess it depends on how you want it set up. Personally, I do it this way just because it's easier for me to tweak stuff later on. Yeah, I would definitely want to tweak stuff. So anyway, I'd, I'd have that, right? So now I have what will end up being my clipping paths. Um, and then I would just go dra or grab, what is this? I go grab whatever uh, pattern I want. So I actually have a thing that has camo patterns in it. Um, let's say woodland camo. So I just grab this, copy it, paste it, and then I would size it to what I kind of want as the proportions, you know, for the pattern to the glove. Um, and then basically, I just do it this way. These patterns were actually set up to where I could have just relinked them. But I'll just copy them like that so that it fills up the space. Okay. Uh, usually like for this, since it's not that big of a difference, I'll just drag it. Uh, I'll group those, so object group. So you just you just duplicated the pattern basically and set them on top of each other. Correct. Okay. And there, if you want to, it to be exact, you can go into view and do smart guides. Okay. I'm line them up that way because it'll lock into place. I don't do that because it's sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Sure. 
Um, so anyway, I would do that, and then basically I would just duplicate that pattern okay. uh, to cover each of the glove spaces. Okay. I won't do the other ones because that's... But then I would group... Basically, I'm selecting this layer and the gloves. Probably be easier, I guess, if I put these to the back so you can see a little better. So from here, I would drag and just grab this group here. Uh -huh. And then I would object group them again. So now these two things are in a group. If I select them, I can move them. They stay together. So I do that to all these pieces. Making sure that you don't grab two, because if you grab two and group them together, it's obviously going to screw up your clipping path. Sure. Um, so I go through, group those. And then uh, I just go down here. You know, how, you know how to make clipping paths, right? Yeah, it's been a long time, but. OK, so once I have these grouped, now you see them in their own groups over here, where I can open them up. Or you just go, you just select something and say create clipping path or something, right? Uh, correct. So this one, for some reason, is saying it's double objects. You got to make sure that they're just single paths. Because see how there's this dot in here? Yeah. From the, the, and that's from the slit from the glove. Um, that probably won't be there, obviously, once we make the new... New layers. New layers, yeah. So that shouldn't be an issue. But basically, you just you only select the black glove part, and then okay. you click on the group. You you highlight it. You don't actually select it. You highlight it over here. Okay. And then you just do mask right here. Make okay. And then okay. you basically just do that for all of them. So this one mask mask. Yep, I'm going to go over this video whenever you send it to me and try it out in case I have any questions. Yeah, so there you have, uh, now you have the clipping mask all set up so that you can just print it. Okay. Um, the way that it is, obviously you can turn off your cut lines if you want them. Yep. Um, that'll be changed once I look at the file as how you have it set up. But so, that's pretty much it. And then you can just, I mean, if you want, you can leave those clipping masks and drop drop a new uh, pattern in there. Uh -huh. um, but like from here, let's say I, I don't want the gloves to be green anymore. I can, uh -huh. I can use this white arrow, uh -huh. select a color, doesn't matter which one, just, you know. And then say select. And then you do select same yeah. fill color. Okay. And that's going to select all the fill color that's unlocked in the file that's that exact color. And by exact, I mean it has to be these exact percentages. If it's off even by 0.1, it won't do it. I see. So it's really key to set up your file correct the first time because, like, a lot of times people will use three different whites for their file. Yeah. And spend all kinds of time trying to figure out what color they use. I've been through that with, I think Corel had something that kind of combined whites and all that stuff. Right. So from here, you can just go through and you know you could click on your colors and change into whatever you want them to be so if they're using rgb colors should i set my uh illustrator or something to to kind of easily see rgb or just set rgb colors well these are already in rgb files okay you're right here rgb preview if i were to go into uh, like, like document like, mode and change it to CMYK, you'll see that they change. Okay. Like if they, like if I'm looking at a, a fabric that they have and they say use RGB this, you just go and select the color and then the color palette comes up as RGB. So let's say they said you want to use our, I have CMYK sliders selected, but you can change it. So let's say you want an RGB blue, right? Yeah. Um, you would want to make sure you go up to here in the color oops, color menu and then click RGB so it changes your sliders to RGB. And then from here you could enter it. So let's say it's, Where was that again? I didn't see the mouse. Oh, so here's my mouse over here, upper right corner. 
there's this little arrow oh. the color thing that then allows you to pick what slider you want. So you want to pick RGB if that's what you're going to work off of. Yeah, I think the menu is hiding it, so I can't see it. Oh, here, we'll do this. What's it called? Okay, I see it. Okay. So it's the color menu. Yeah. Sometimes it'll look like this. Okay. Sometimes it'll it. look like this. Okay, so I just select RGB. So select RGB, and then from here you can just type in the settings that they give you. So 255, 75, we'll say 80. And then there it goes. It's, it sets your color to whatever that exact percentage is. Cool. Um, you can also do it like web color, which I'm sure you're familiar with, with the, uh, the colors you would use for a website down here. Here. So you can enter you know, the specific code, and then it'll also change that. Okay. Um, but if you still have it, we made swatches at one point that have like good color profiles, I guess. Um, well, you have that you have that sheet, right? That still has the RGB stuff on it. Yeah, I, all right. Uh, I, I I probably don't have the printed sheet, but I have the electronic file. Okay. But uh, we're using a different printer and a different fabric and everything, so that's probably not good anymore. Okay. Yeah, because it might be worth it just to print one of those out so you know what color you want specifically so that you can type it back in. Because yeah, a lot of times stuff on screen is not going to look like what it actually prints yeah. as. Well, I'm a, yeah, the manufacturer gave me swatches of all their fabrics and then and then all the RGB values. Okay. Like we did, so. Okay. Um, so from there, uh, you can obviously just add any company logo as you choose. So if I were to go into um, my logo stuff, which I don't even remember, I have this crap saved anymore. Uh, pictures. So if I were to grab this logo, for instance, I could just copy it. Oops. I don't have that all grouped. Just paste it on there. And then you're pretty much done. I mean, depending on where they want it. Yeah. You know, I think initially we were putting them like right here. Kind of on the. Yeah, I'll have to check our old ones that we did to kind of kind of put guidelines on where they should be and stuff. Right. Some things, so. <clears throat> But I mean, it's pretty much that easy. So for you could really quick just grab it and say, "Oh, I want it to look like this color." You know, and you can change all the colors inside there if you want to do it that way. But so, like the the, the flame background and stuff that you did before, I can do it the same way, pretty much. I don't know about the flame one because I don't remember how I built that one. I think I made it so that yes, you can. Uh, those are kind of a different thing, though. So when you have are those are those Illustrator or Photoshop? I I'd have to see them. Some were Photoshop, some were Illustrator. Okay. I mean, I can show you really quick how those are probably set up if you want. It's a little bit yeah. more complicated, though. Um. Yeah. Let me play around with it first, and then I'll do it another session or something sometime. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you want me to walk through while the video is recording then? Um, 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 not right now. No, this is good for this video. Okay. So you can stop the video and I think uh, when you end the meeting is when it processes it. So.